This video was not planned. I'm kind of doing this impromptu because I received more than a few comments about the lack of an exhaust fan in the P400A and how my conclusions were somehow skewed because I didn't include another fan. I just used the fans that came with the case that were installed out of the box. You guys know why I do that. I test things out of the box because that's how most people tend to leave things. I don't expect all of you to have extra fans laying around that you can pull from build to build, although that would be ideal. Uh, I just don't like to leave those people out. So I stressed in that video, that this was gonna be more of a worst case scenario because first off, we're using the white version, which is gonna reduce the porosity of the front panel, uh, but also that we were using just the three fans because three fans is typically enough for most most cases out there, I'd say at least most mid towers, three fans should be enough. Uh, I left them in the stock config because I figured Fantex knew what they were doing. If you have a porous front panel, you're gonna put as many fans up there as you can because you can get more air into the case. And whether or not it's a negative or a positive pressure differential between the case and atmosphere, I think that that's more or less irrelevant. A lot of people who do this, like, case testing for a living, including people who work in NVIDIA, AMD, and elsewhere, will tell you that the, the, the pros and cons of positive and negative pressure really kind of, they kind of balance each other out. Whether you're doing one or the other, as long as you have some movement of air in and out of the case, that's what you should be going for. And you guys were hinting, at, a few of you were hinting at how including an exhaust fan would speed up that air removal process, get rid of some of that heat and lower CPU temps, possibly even graphics card temps. I'm not sure how a single exhaust fan at the rear next to the CPU cooler is gonna affect graphics card temps, but we'll find out in this video. And the whole point is to learn something. So we're gonna see if one exhaust fan can make a heck of a difference because that's what some of you seem to think. So we'll see. If you're rocking the Windows 10 operating system and haven't activated your copy, click the link below and purchase an OEM license from SCD Key. Then click here, 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 and then here. Paste your activation key and you'll have a fully activated OS in seconds. And be sure to use my offer code SStudio for an 18% discount on your order. So we will need to rebuild our entire system in this case. That's okay, part of the job, not a big deal. Some of you were complaining about the fact that I was using the stock fans. That's not gonna change. I'm not gonna swap these fans for Noctua fans, it's not gonna happen. You can go to other channels for that stuff. I'm gonna test what comes in the box and I, I might add to that just to play around with it like we're gonna do in this video, but I'm not gonna swap these out entirely. Some of you were saying that these fans weren't ideal for pulling air through. If that's the case, that's Fantech's fault and I'm still gonna conclude the way that I concluded in the original review. Uh, we did also test the viability of the mesh by completely masking it off and allowing air to be pulled in from the top and bottom as was the case in traditional P400 and concluded that the mesh itself was not very effective at allowing air to pass through it. So I'm not sold on the idea that replacing these fans will magically make the mesh any more porous. Like th that's why I ran the tests that I did in that video. Uh, so these fans are gonna stay in here. There's my justification for that. The only variable in this video is going to be that single exhaust fan. We're just gonna see how big a difference that one fan makes for temperatures on both our CPU and graphics card. Uh, yeah. All right, let's build and then I will show in real time the test. We'll try to replicate our results from the review video first and then we'll throw that one fan in there and see how things change. All right, I'm gonna try a really cool jump at it. You ready for this? Three, two, one. All right, that was probably really cheesy, but that was like 20 minutes of work. It was pretty straightforward. All right, now coming up on 30 minutes for this test, I kept the monitor pretty far away from the uh, case because I don't want the heat from the monitor to affect temperatures here. Again, we want to keep this isolated. I've made sure Pepsi is not messing with anything. Pepsi, Pepsi, you're not messing with anything, right? All right, so let's stop this test and we are going to put up here to statistics. And look at that, Core 5, 85 degrees. That's exactly what we found last time. And GPU diode, 77 degrees. Let's see, I have my phone here to double check. I don't remember exactly what graphics card temps were. As long as we're within one degree Celsius of yesterday's temperatures, we'll be okay. P400A panel on 8577. Okay, cool. So exactly what we got yesterday on this test. So if you were doubting my results from yesterday, you can see it in real time here. By the way, all of our fans are running at a 50% fan curve 
The reason why I use 50% and, and I don't set it to a, an RPM specifically is because every case fan is different. So every fan is, Pepsi, what are you doing? Hey, what are you, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? Anyway, every case fan is designed to run at a different RPM. If you buy certain fans that are meant to run quietly, they're probably going to have a lower operating RPM, and that's just because the, the slower the fan rotates, typically the quieter it, op uh, quieter it is. So I set a fan curve for all of our case tests to 50% on the motherboard. So no matter what fan I plug into it, whether it be voltage or PWM, those fans are set to run at 50% max load. This is fair in my eyes because if you throw a 200 millimeter fan in here, right? Those fans are gonna, Pepsi, really? Those fans are gonna turn much slower than 120 mil fans because they don't have to turn as fast to move the same amount of air. So 50% of that fan curve or, or that max RPM might be 400 RPM, right? Whereas these fans might be operating at closer to a thousand. In fact, I think they're operating at like 950 at a 50% curve. So uh, that's why it's not gonna be the same RPM for every fan. And that's just because some fans are designed to run slower than others. I'm not gonna fault or give an advantage to any stock fan. They're all gonna run at the same uh, percentage of their full curve, their full potential. The exhaust fan we're gonna be using is the Chromax Noctua NF F12 PWM 120 millimeter fan. It is a black fan, unlike some of Noctua's frankly uglier brown ones, which is nice. That's why they call it Chromax. Also another reason why they call it Chromax is because you can swap these out. Black looks good with really any background color. You have yellow, blue, green, red, white, and black rubber vibration mounts that you can install pretty easily on these fan frames. And you can effectively change the color and, and theme of the fan to match your build. So another uh, perk of going with the Chromax fan, it's also gonna run fairly quiet because it is an Octua fan, after all. I've linked one of these down below if you're interested. Noctua sent these a long time ago for builds and whatnot, and I haven't actually taken the time to showcase one of these for you guys. So this is the one we're gonna use, 50% fan curve. The operating RPM is like 1500 RPM, so uh, take that into, into account. Four pin again, and the acoustic noise, 22.4 uh, dBA, okay, uh, yep. All right, let's throw this into the system. All right, and we've just crossed the 30 minute threshold. You can see things have leveled out. Uh, they, they leveled out quite a while ago, and that's indicative of air-cooled builds, right? You can saturate uh, you know, a, a smaller CPU cooler fairly fast, whereas if you're using an AIO or something that involved water, then you would have to let this run for, I would say at least 30 minutes, uh, but probably longer than that in some cases, depending on how big the loop is, because it takes a lot more energy to heat up water, uh, a, a unit of water, a certain amount of water by one degree Celsius. Uh, so this is just for good measure, right? Running it this long. We're gonna click stop and we're gonna check the stats again. And the hottest core again was core five at 85 degrees Celsius. Now this is interesting. So I didn't expect this at all. This is kind of weird. The GPU diode, uh, th that's just the, the diode in the GPU itself to measure temps, 74 degrees Celsius. That is, if I recall correctly, a three degrees Celsius drop from the non-exhaust fan run. So what's probably happening is the exhaust fan is pulling out more of the air than would be the case if we didn't have an exhaust fan. That allows the internals of this case to run at a slightly lower pressure than stock. So we were running at a fairly positive pressure to begin with. This kind of reduces that differential between the atmosphere and the internals of the case. And that probably allows the graphics card to pull more air into the shroud from behind, right? So if there's more pressure inside the case than there is an atmosphere, it's gonna be harder for the graphics card to pull even more air inside the case because remember, you know, pressure flows from high to low, right? So where areas of high pressure exist, that wants to escape, it wants to go up, the, basically vent the atmosphere. And so that's counteracting the pull of the graphics card trying to get that fresh air in from the back, uh, which is what we saw with the H500, right? That's why graphics card temps in the H500 were a lot better than we expected, despite not having a fan up front giving the card fresh air. Because we were running a negative setup in that case, the graphics card had no issues pulling fresh air in from the back. Interesting results here. So now what I've done, just for one more test, because I, I feel like while we're at it, we might as well try a few other things. Uh, I'm going to max out 
the fan curve for the exhaust fan. So now you can see, remember on the box it said it was around 1500 RPM, plus or minus 10%. So right now at full speed, we're at about 1400, a little over 1400 RPM for that exhaust fan. It will remain this speed for the duration of the test. And now we are going to see if the CPU can drop by even one degree Celsius. And coming up on 30 minutes, one last time here, we're gonna hit stop, statistics, and look at there. Finally, our hottest core, core five, has dropped by four degrees from 85 to 81. So we could conclude a few different things from these tests. First up, I don't want you guys to generalize this too much because we only tested one case. Every case is going to have its own unique airflow characteristics. I will say that we can kind of generalize this at least for mid towers with somewhat restricted front panels and in situations where we have three fans that are trying to pull in air through a you know, restricted panel, I think this is where this would apply the most. Adding an exhaust fan, can definitely benefit the graphics card for reasons we explained a bit earlier. As for the CPU, we saw no temperature change at all when the fan was running at 50% of its max RPM. If you do decide to run that fan at 100% RPM for the entire gaming session or whatever workload session you're running, then sure, your CPU will benefit from that. My point is, you won't see those gains until you set that fan to some unrealistic curve. Uh, I would not advise anyone go out and just by default set your fan curve to 100% for the entire load. That to me is just, it's not realistic and you don't need to do that. Um, and your your CPU is going to be just fine running two or three degrees hotter, assuming you're not already at T-junction uh, and assuming you're not being thermal, thermal throttled. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, the graphics card sure benefited by what, three degrees? I'll give you that. That's a, a noteworthy uh, decrease in temperature just by adding an exhaust fan. You wouldn't think at first that it would affect that. I'm, I was kind of surprised at first, but I think it makes sense the more we look into it. Uh, but yeah, the CPU, I mean, you've got to turn this fan up to, to really get it to pull more heat from the CPU cooler. We've already got a CPU cooler fan effectively exhausting air. Like it's literally pushing air through the exhaust vents in the case. So adding a second fan there is just gonna speed that process a bit more, uh, but you're only gonna see those results again when the fan is turned up. So I'm not willing to outright say that an exhaust fan will radically change anything about the tests that we run. Having an exhaust fan is good. It's a good practice, even if it's a cheap fan, assuming it's not gonna run super loud at again, around a 50% curve. Uh, that's just what I use. Other reviewers might use 40%, 80%. Heck, they might set a specific RPM for every fan, and that's fine. They can justify that how they want. I feel like I've justified mine enough in this video, uh, but I I'm willing to say that, yeah, exhaust fans, I'm not gonna throw one into every case. If manufacturers choose to throw one up there, that's fine. Um, I'm, I'm still content on testing cases exactly how they come out of the box. Someone said, well, what if a case doesn't come with any fans? Well, in that case, what I would do is include two or three fans, it'd probably only be two, and then I would add the price of those fans to the price of the case. They're not gonna be expensive fans, but I expect that people who buy this case will also have to buy fans. So if you're not going to include fans out of the box, then I'm going to add that to the price or, or my uh, overall outlook of that case. So. Uh, that's how I do it. Everyone's gonna do this stuff differently, but at least uh, at least we learned something. I learned something. I didn't know that adding an exhaust fan would change graphics card temps more than CPU temps at a lower curve. So that's interesting. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thumbs up if you liked it. Click that red subscribe button. I will catch you in the next one. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.